live video is starting apologies everyone we were just talking to ourselves for about seven minutes um we were asking lots of questions and clearly no one could hear us because as usual we're having problems with the it but we think we're live we now. think we're live but if somebody could comment or send us message. a little message to say Anything. that they can hear us that would be great because we've already mm. just said this for about five minutes mm. and i need a drink Shaz, Shaz <laughs> is very stressed <laughs> although she's very good with it i oh. i cannot be relied upon in this type of uh, situation right have we got right can danny hear um yes she can hear it. she says yes really? yes oh! <laughs> andrew thank you andrew <laughs> I think what happened was we started the first one. For some reason, it was a test one, which you weren't expecting. So we got rid of that and we started again. So nice to have you with us. Welcome. I'm Shaz Chilcott. I'm volunteer with Crohn's and Goliaths, East Gormon and West Devon. I'm Cathy, one of the IBD nurses at Derriford. And it's lovely to see that you are joining us you now. You are here. Oh, yes. we can see. Oh, lovely, lovely, yes. lovely. Oh, good. Sharon's there as well. Hi, Andrew, and hi, Sharon. They were both at our coffee morning. Lovely. The so coffee mornings very... are going well, aren't yes, they? Yes, it was very nice. Yeah, lovely. Yes. Good. Um, so, we'll crack on. We do have quite a few questions that have already been emailed through, um, which are quite nice, which is quite nice. So, I'll start on those. Um, the first one we have tonight is, how do you choose a biologic um, for Crohn's or colitis? And then, also related to that is the second question, how and why do you swap? Very good questions. And is that related to the new drugs as well? Or are they and, biologics? Yes. Yeah. So right. you may or may not be aware that there's now a vast array of biologics, biological drugs. I mean, historically, we started off with infliximab and adalimumab. Those are the kind of only biologics we had. And now yeah. we've got about 10 or 12. And every wow. month there seems to be new biologics. And they all add, they'll end in ab. They all end in mab. We were trying to remember the name of one the other day. And... <laughs> I don't know if it was in conversation with you, Andrew, possibly. And we were going, yeah, does it start with ad? And we weren't sure, did it start with ad? But we knew it ended with ab. <laughs> so, they, you know, there's so many. I won't go, because you could do a whole Facebook Live on just biological drugs. And I won't go into that, because it's not really necessary. Um, Hi, but Julie. Do, but we do Sorry. now also have um, some t um, tablet form of biological medications, which are very patient-friendly obviously avoid the need for an injection and need for infusion um you know and so far we've only got a few people on well relatively few people on those but uh yeah you know it's looking favorable um we've oh got... andrews is high remos that's adalimumab ah yeah, yeah. it is so that it the is the, ad, ones, yeah. the one that begins with adenine yeah in the absolutely yes. so we've got um tofacitinib upper decitinib <laughs> And filgotinib, <laughs> which are what we call jack inhibitors, so they work in a slightly different way to the anti-TNF, which is the infliximab and adalimumab. And then we've got ustinicumab, rizankizumab. Oh, ustinicumab, I remember you mentioned him before. Yeah, that's been around a while. Right. And then the newish ones are rizankizumab and mer merkizumab. Got to get these right. Mm. Um, and they're new biological agents that are coming on the market slowly or have been for the past sort of six months to 12 months and I think they are I checked today and they are now all on the Crohn's and Colitis website right every single one. Oh, that's good with the exception so check our website to find out about all these because you map which is not yet on there oh right so yeah so there's lots of different there's so many varieties now and it's a very good question how do you choose a biologic and it's probably true to say that up until now it's been a little bit ad hoc which biologic you get if you're acutely unwell on a ward with very severe colitis or Crohn's, you will nearly always get infliximab because that's historically always been used and it works the quickest and it's intravenous. So there's kind of that premise that it works very quickly, hits the spot and people get well. Yeah. So but we still use you have to be that's you have to go infusion. into yeah, yes. you have to go into hospital first, yeah. don't you? Which so it, some people find more yeah, absolutely. limiting. So if you're on infliximab, then often it's because you've been ill in hospital um, and been quite poorly, so you need to be on, so that's the drug of choice. If um, alternatives are things like Haramoz, which is adalimumab. Right. Um, I hope you've got that, Andrew, for next time. <laughs> <laughs> They're all, they've all got generic names as well. It's a minefield. Um, and that's a subcutaneous injection. That can be used in an acute setting, but isn't used quite as much as infliximab. 
Um, so from the, answer, from the point of view of how do you choose one, we tend to see how acutely unwell someone is. If they're acutely Ill, Ill in a hospital, they're getting infliximab, possibly adalimumab if they've had infliximab before. If people have um, like a, a fairly significant colitis or Crohn's disease, um, then they can have any of the alternatives, really. Vedalizumab, which we use a lot of, which is also an infusion to start with and then a subcut injection, um, is a very um, well tolerated drug and it's particularly good because it doesn't suppress your immune system as much as some ah, others. So it's what we call helpful. gut specific. Mm. So we use vedalizumab a lot in the older population and for people that don't when have... When you say older? Over 70. Oh, over 70? Often. I'm not that old yet. And we also <laughs> use it in more mild to moderate disease. So right. you wouldn't have it in an acute setting if someone had terrible disease. No. But there are some, there's some data to suggest it can be quite helpful in moderate flares. Yeah. So vedalizumab is also a very nice drug if you've got other things wrong with you. If you have heart disease, if you have a history of um, heart um, clots, anything like that, you would use vedalizumab. The, the new kids on the block, the tablets, um, tablets. Tablet forms. Biologic tablets? Yes. Oh, yeah. I so, didn't know you had that. Yeah, yeah. So tofacitinib and upadacitinib. I like toffee. I like the toffee one. Toffee. <laughs> they are called jack inhibitors and they're tablets. Um, and they're very well tolerated and very effective. But you can't use them in people that have a history of blood clots in their family right. or that have high cholesterol, things like that. So you do have to be a little bit more careful. Okay. So that's the kind of how do you choose a biologic? There are so many now, really, that generally speaking, it tends to be an MDT discussion and we would go with MDT. a multidisciplinary team, team meeting. So we would discuss the person starting it, have a chat with them. You know, some people are needle phobic. Some people can't come to the hospital. So that, that yeah. would govern whether you're not, you know, if you live in, I don't know, miles and miles away, you don't want to yeah. come in every few weeks no. for an infliximab. So all sorts of reasons, um, you know, all sorts of you know parameters as to why you choose a certain biologic. Stopping a biologic is always, um, um, you know, difficult for the patient, um, especially if they've been very very well on it. So that's understandable if you've been very sick before and you are on a biologic that's working fantastically for you. There's obviously a lot of anxiety about stopping it, which is reasonable. Yeah. Does do you have to like? Fade it out, a bit no, like steroids. No, oh no, don't. you just cut it off. The, yeah. the NICE guidance, so the National Institute for Clinical Excellence, which is how what we're meant to follow for expensive drugs, and of course these are expensive, yeah. um, suggests that people are on them for a year, and then after right. a year they should be reassessed That's not and they should long, be stopped. Is it? No, it's not. And in practice, people that have significant disease or aggressive disease or have I don't know, very difficult disease, they're often on it a long, long, long yeah. time. So it's, it's very much individual patients, really, and, and what you've got, what's wrong with you if you have Crohn's all over you, mm. if you've got it from all in your small bowel, in your large bowel, in the tail end, often you're going to be on, need to be on something a lot longer than people that have a segment of, say, ulcerative colitis, yeah. that could possibly get away with it for a year, then stop it and be fine. Yeah. So the guidance is, after a year, you get reassessed either with blood tests, stool sample or investigations. Um, and based on those, you'd give it a go at stopping it. Nothing to say you can't restart it. No. Um, but it's good. And it can, it can work because I remember, I mean, you, I wasn't on biologics, but you took me off my captopurin eventually because you said I've been on it too long. <laughs> And I was like, don't do this to me. Yeah, it's very me. anxiety making. It was. It's very like, anxiety making. Uh, but, it, it, but it was fine. I mean, yeah, I went back on Pentazol. It is it really difficult because you do get people that are on infliximab that have stopped it. And within three months, they've got a really horrible flare. Yeah. And it's really miserable. A lot of people are young, aren't they? Living, like, exactly. going to university, A-levels. Yeah. You know, so we do try and not stop it without really good evidence yeah, yeah. that the disease is in remission. But the flip side is you don't want to be young and on immunosuppressants for your whole no, life. No, exactly. So I agree. Yeah. There has to be a stopping point, yeah. ideally. Absolutely. Um, so that's so I think that's covered those two questions. If anyone's got any specific questions of biologics, stopping it, do email in. Oh hi Heather and Emma Jane. Hi Heather and Emma Jane. Um Okay, this is a it is quite an interesting question. I've been diagnosed with colitis, ulcerative colitis, since I stopped smoking six months ago. Should I restart smoking? 
Shaz just burst out <laughs> laughing when she read this a minute ago, but there's actually really good evidence for this. It's quite, it, it's very interesting. So when you, um, for some reason we don't fully understand, smoking protects people with ulcerative colitis. With so I'm just starting. <laughs> With Crohn's, it's completely the opposite. So if you smoke with Crohn's, your drugs are less likely to work by 50%. Wow, You're a lot. You're 50% more likely to end up having an operation. Um, and it's very, very damaging for your, you know, for the bowel. If you, people that often stop smoking will then develop colitis within three months if they've got that genetic predisposition. Mm. And we've had quite a few people that have had lots of medications for colitis and nothing has worked and they've started smoking and it's instantly gone. That is weird, isn't Very it? Very weird. Like, given that smoking is so bad for you in so yeah. many other ways. So we've got like, there's lots of I research. I mean, you, you don't obviously go around going, it's good if you start smoking, no. do you? No, <laughs> we would never advocate that. But it is difficult. We've it's had difficult some people when... that really, it's the only thing that works. Yeah. Um, they've done lots of research into nicotine patches, nicotine enemas. Oh yeah. Fancy one of them? No. <laughs> And they still haven't really found out what it is in a cigarette that, is that protects weird. people with colitis. But you see it all the time. So very, very common. You know, somebody comes in with a bad flow of colitis, they've given up smoking. That so just mental. We're, just we're not allowed to say yes, start smoking. Yeah, it, really? <laughs> because, you know, the risks of lung cancer are significant. Yeah, the risks yeah. to your cardiovascular health, Heart, yeah, all exactly. those things. Yeah. But, you know, it is, um, it's an interesting, interesting debate. That is weird. So whoever you are, please don't start smoking. <laughs> but you do have my sympathy. <laughs> because um, you know, it is difficult when you've um when it's the only thing that works. I know. Yeah. yeah. That is so strange. Yeah. It's really I, nice. I smoked when I was much younger, certainly in my twenties, but I stopped before I had the kids. So it was I was probably just around thirty and I stopped because I didn't have my kids so I was in my thirties. But I stopped smoking then. But I wasn't smoking a lot, but I never had UC. Interesting. And I never had UC until another 10 years. Yeah, that's So that's it's funny, that was time. quite a long time. So you can't really see a no, correlation it, it tends there. No, you tend to notice more people are like, like getting it within three straight months. away. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. That is weird. Yeah, very odd. Um, but anyway, carry on not smoking. Yes. And we'll give you a we'll give you a nice drug instead. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, um, is there a relationship between joint problems and IBD? Very common. Definitely, question. it is. People yeah. always, always. Yeah, definitely. This is so common with people. I think. Very common. So there's there's two um, there's two sides to this, I guess. One is that people with an active flare of either Crohn's or colitis can get aching joints. So we call that arthralgia. So quite significant pain in their joints. They've got an active flare. They're feeling awful, almost a bit flu-like, I suppose. Mm. But if you scanned their joints, their joints wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a degenerative thing. No. So, you know, the joints look okay. Yeah. Um, there's not inflammation in the joint, but they have dreadful joint yeah. pain. pain. Mm. Um, so what do you call it? Arthralgia. arthralgia. So is that half, half arthritis? It just means pain in your joints. Oh right, yeah, so which is where arthritis comes yeah, from. Yeah, absolutely. Suppose. Right, okay. In the absence of active inflammation. Yeah. So um, nine times out of ten, that will improve when the disease is under control. So if you improve the Crohn's, the colitis, you make people well, then they will, their joints will improve. Yeah. And that happens in a lot of people. The other um, uh, cohort of people will actually have an inflammatory arthritis as well as their colitis. Right, so, so they just will have side. joint inflammation. Mm. Yeah, um, and that normally needs to be um, investigated with a rheumatologist. Yeah, so separate. Yeah, thing, a separate really. thing, but it is kind of related to the IBD because yeah. people with IBD... The same we, drugs are sometimes uh, Yeah, used, and often it's they? an autoimmune... Well, we know it's autoimmune. Yeah. A lot of IBD is autoimmune. And then, sadly, when people have one autoimmune condition, 
they often pick up a few no, others. Yeah. So a lot of people have celiac, they have yeah. thyroid, they're mm. diabetic. They you know they often have this sort of lots of them all together. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's quite difficult. If although some of our biologics do cover colitis, Crohn's, and joint disease, so one mm. biologic like infliximab, for example, will cover everything. Right. So if you have rheumatoid arthritis and you have Crohn's, infliximab will sort both things out. Oh, that's good. Um, where it becomes more difficult is where people have had some of the drugs and the drugs that the rheumatologists are offering them don't cover their disease right, from yeah. our point of view. Yeah. So that can be much more can tricky they clash? to manage. Do they ever clash? I mean, if you give one drug and the rheumatoid people give another, rheumatology give another, yeah. Is that going to I mean we cause a we don't we don't tend to at the moment we don't tend to give two biologics together although that is now coming into the that is lots of people are doing that now. Right. So in um you know it is on the agenda. Yeah. Um and there's been lots of papers written and lots of research to suggest it's safe to give certain biologics together and I'm sure right. that will come. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we will be doing that soon. Um at the moment we don't tend to give two biologics together. Rheumatology tend to give more drugs all together than we do. Right. Um, and normally we will liaise with them and they will call us, we'll right, call them, and, right. so say, has this man had this? No, yeah. they haven't. Can you give this? And we'll prescribe it and it will cover right. his IBD as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's good. I mean, that, that's like your, what you're talking about just now. What do you call it? The um, joint team thing? MDT. 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 Mm, yeah. So we do have like fairly close relationships with rheumatology um but they like everybody i guess i mean i think they're probably um, worse off than gastroenterology from the point of view of follow-up and um significant amount of patients yeah. they have going through so it can be quite difficult to get referrals to rheumatology yeah. um gps can sometimes be a bit reluctant to refer people on to rheumatology if they're already under us oh, so right. you know yeah. it, it, it's it, it's a matter of kind of making sure that the right pathways are Yeah, I've come four people, yeah. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Um, but most people with joint pain, it tends to coincide with their flares. Mm. So they'll just say, I just feel generally under the weather, my joints yeah. are really aching. You give them steroids, oh, all my symptoms are gone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm. you know. If anybody's got any <laughs> questions, do type them in. We've got some, we have, still have some questions, but... We you know, have a few. Please type one in if you've got one there. Is it, <clears> have we got it going on down oh. here? No, that's his Evening. Oh. Evening. Whoop. Everyone's like, Evening. <laughs> <laughs> and hi. Hi. <laughs> that's hi, Judy. Because Judy's coming to help us on Dickensian evening. Judy. I, Judy Taylor. Oh, lovely. Yeah, she's coming to help us on Dickensian evening, so that would be nice. Very nice. It helped, yes. Mold wine. Yeah, I'm talking of Dickensian. I should say Dickensian evening, Friday the first of February from five till nine thirty. I think you mean December. Did I say what did I say? November. You said February. Oh, did I? Yeah. Oh my God. Earlier December. On she said, earlier on, she said I stopped. I was eighty. I stopped smoking in my eighties. <laughs> She's looking. I don't need. On it. I don't need one sip of wine then as well. <laughs> That was funny. December the 1st, Friday, December the 1st. <laughs> Not February. From 5, well, 4th day we'll be there. From 5 until 9.30, um, we're selling hot mulled wine, and it's lovely. It's alcoholic, but it's absolutely delicious. And um, mince pies that Karen makes. In, uh, we're outside Karen's, which is 42 Brook Street in Tavistock. And um, she she donates all these wonderful mince pies, and the Karen's is an amazing cook. Absolutely, she makes wonderful cakes. Mm -hmm. oh. Anyway, she donates all this stuff for us to sell on the night for charity, and we usually make around a thousand pounds just selling mm -hmm. what she's donated, which yeah. is fabulous. So do come and see us because it'll be a great evening. And if if it's a little bit wet, don't matter. And Chaz will be there with her mouth wine. I'll be there. I'm there for the first half anyway. Oh. <laughs> We got two shifts. We got enough people to make two shifts this year, so we, we don't have to stay there the whole evening <laughs> in the freezing cold or the rain. <laughs> so that's better. Oh dear. Okay, All right. Well, so on to my next question. I was recently diagnosed with colitis. Not not me. No. This is something. That, no. Yeah. I might have, but that was quite a long I time ago. I was recently ago. diagnosed with colitis, and I had a colonoscopy, which I didn't find a very pleasant procedure at all. Will I need another one? Oh, oh dear. 
Sorry, you didn't find that a pleasant procedure. They're not pleasant. They're, I mean, they're uh, they're not pleasant. They're they're but I would say uncomfortable. Yeah. Some people find them more painful. I find them more uncomfortable. Yeah. Most people I know tend to find them uncomfortable. I think that's true. I think it's not the pain. It's verging on, but it's more just uncomfortable. It's yeah. not nice. And people report such a wide kind of experience. Yeah, yeah. So I barely felt it at all. To you know, I really wasn't. I, I was yeah. in pain. Um, the prep's worse. The prep it? is awful. The prep's worse than the actual colonoscopy. As a rule of thumb, <laughs> you shouldn't be in a lot of pain. No. Um, and that, you know, if you do, and this is true for anyone undergoing these tests in the future, if you do not, if you're not happy at the time or you're in a lot of pain, then just ask the endoscopist for more um, sedation. Yeah. Because nearly always. They will always, sedate you yeah, quite well, a lot that's if you right. want to. Yeah, and nearly always you can tweak pain relief and sedation yeah. to the patient's symptoms. Yeah. So, yeah, it's. It's, it's miserable that your first ever colonoscopy was a bad experience because, um, you know, that understandably would put you off having any more. But you'll be lucky if to you be... don't have another one. Yeah. <laughs> I was just about to be reassuring. Yeah. <laughs> but, come on. You make us have one every five minutes. No, not every five minutes, but it seems, right. a, so seems quite if, often. If, if you're not like a long-term like Shaz. Right, okay, I'll start at the beginning. So you don't need regular, regular colonoscopies in the early days. Um, the only time you need a colonoscopy following diagnosis would be if you weren't doing well, if you were very poorly, if we couldn't get the medication sorted, if you were on biologics, for example, that weren't working. And then what we would tend to do, if you weren't right, rather than a full colonoscopy, would do what we call a flexible sigmoidoscopy. Mm. That's no prep just looking into the lower bowel. Mm. And that's what we do for people on the wards, people that are having flares. So, you know, it, it, in all likelihood, you have an in, what we call an index colonoscopy. You get your treatment um, in an ideal world. It works. You go away and we don't see you and you don't need regular colonoscopies. She's <laughs> laughing. Um, once you've I got remember to, that when you when you asked me to have my next one. I was just about to I know. counter it. You were just going to say why I have to have one. I know. <laughs> if you've had your colitis for more than 10 years, you should be starting a surveillance programme. And that's really looking for um, bowel cancer, very early bowel cancers. There's a very, very small risk, and it is tiny, 2-3% after 10 years of developing polyps that might go cancerous in the bowel and we counter affect that really by surveying your colon as it is um, so every two years or so after you reach the 10 year mark when you get to 20 years <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> um, the risk is slightly increased so these poor people end up having a colonoscopy every one to two years but if they've been well for many many years their bloods are fine, their stool samples are fine, we, we can lessen that. There are official guidelines for surveillance, but we are we do look at individuals, we see how bad their disease yeah, has been previously, whether or not it's not been, but on the whole, yeah, <laughs> after 10 to 15 years, you will need some surveillance. But this isn't gonna affect this, this person that's emailed. No, no, it isn't. Because they, she, he, has only just been diagnosed, so all being well, you won't need another one for a long time. For a long time. And, 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 and if you ever did, you need to ask for more drugs. Yeah, that's clearly it. Ask for more drugs. I mean, always ask for more drugs. That's the name of the game. <laughs> Kathy, are there any statistics regarding I'll antibodies? Put my glasses on now. Kathy, are there any statistics regarding antibodies building up against our current biologics when we stop them during the last, last trimester, trimester of pregnancy? And how quick quickly can we restart after giving birth? Is this something that is appropriate to you, Heather? I wonder. <laughs> She's about to explode with another one. <laughs> Bless her. Good question. I haven't covered antibodies with biologics, but what it's a very good... good Danny's answer. just said, what about 40 years? <laughs> then you have a colonoscopy every 10 minutes, Danny. All right? <laughs> oh, and Andrew said, is that the same for Crohn's? The guidance isn't the same for Crohn's, actually. But if it's Crohn's colitis in the colon, then we would follow the same kind of routine. Right, yeah. If you've got Crohn's in the small bowel, you wouldn't need a colonoscopy. Yes. And Julie mentioned, is there an alternative to colonoscopy? Well, you were talking about the flexi... Yeah, the flexi-sig. There is... Um, I'll get back to your question in two secs. Yeah. yeah. There so is go, yeah. a new, relatively new um, procedure called a capsule endoscopy. Capsule colonoscopy, sorry. You might have heard of it. Um, which some trusts are using more of than others. Oh. A capsule involves swallowing a camera, cap a tiny little pill cam. 
oh, well, I guess, can I do that? <laughs> I'd, so... I'd rather do that than have the camera and all the Some prep. Some people who are special need oh. the <laughs> Are you saying I'm not special needs? <laughs> <laughs> Need the full caboodle. <laughs> but um, capsule colonoscopy does have a role and its role is is basically if you want, you can't take it biopsies. So that's going to be a oh, real yeah, downside. Yeah. So yeah. anybody needing a surveillance, they're out because you would oh. need lots of biopsies taken out of surveillance because obviously you're looking for early signs of anything nasty. Um, you can use a capsule if you have an established diagnosis. Um, so you know you've got colitis or Crohn's. You just want to look for inflammation. You don't want to take biopsies. And that's its kind of niche. So You're, you're saying that I'm under surveillance, <laughs> so I can't have a camera. You have to I know you said that. <laughs> that's what you said. Yeah. <laughs> Am I fine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's the capsule. But it that's coming. That's coming too. You know, that cool. will be kicking off getting back to Heather's question yes so antibodies um, are a very common problem with certain <laughs> drugs <laughs> infliximab um, she's so, oh. don't, don't read bog off Kathy from Danny <laughs> that's just dog dog. no no it right. actually says bog off let's, let's ignore be, that right, we're okay. going back to Heather's question okay going back polite to Heather's question. people um, Antibodies. So antibodies can form in a lot of the biological drugs, specifically infliximab and adalimumab are the commonest ones. Um, we can measure le measure levels in ustekinumab, but not antibodies. And the other ones are too new, so I'm not sure what the evidence is for that. But the majority of our patients are on infliximab and adalimumab slash hiramos, same drug. So um, in answer to your question about what, <laughs> what even was it? <laughs> Statistics okay. regarding antibodies. Building, building up, up against current biologists. We stop them during, yeah. So, yeah, I think it's true to say that irrespective of whether you stop it in the third trimester or whenever you stop it, pregnancy-related or not, you're always at risk of developing antibodies. So that's, you get antibodies from so, the drug when you have big gaps in treatment. Right. And some people develop antibodies anyway. Yeah. So some people develop antibodies to infliximab even though they're having it every eight weeks. Some people develop antibodies oh, right. to hiramos even though they're having it every two weeks. They are just common antibody forming drugs. Yeah, but the, but the you've got so many different biologics. Absolutely, they can and move on know, to a different one. Years ago, when we were first probably. monitoring biologic antibodies, we used to just say, "Oh, they've got antibodies, stop it." Now, recent um, research would suggest that if you re-challenge people with a higher dose, they'll reduce the antibody formation. Ah. So in infliximab, if someone comes in, they've got very low levels of the drug. Mm. and they've got antibodies what we'll do is give them a twice the dose so it will reboot the system right with hiramos and adalimumab again we can do a weekly dosing rather than every other week and then measure yeah. them now sometimes you won't regain response and you so, will have to move to another, to another drug but sometimes you can use the same drug yeah, again yeah, just yeah. just up it but would you up it and then lower it later yeah yeah right, so you yeah. recheck the antibodies so in pregnancy yeah, yeah. And, and again pregnancy this third trimester thing is so it's very old evidence now that you know the the guidance and the national standards still say stop it in third trimester but in fact a lot of obstetricians are actually saying to a lot of women now to continue it right. so it's a little bit woolly oh. the downside of continuing a drug in pregnancy to the end yeah. is that you can't have live vaccinations for the baby for a year right oh. and that, that's quite a big thing that is isn't it so um you know it's all risk benefit needs to go but, through your obstetrician have you got very aggressive disease then yes you might be advised to carry on if you don't have aggressive disease and if you're quite well you can stop it but it all needs to be any on an individual basis really so that would be i mean heather probably wouldn't have known about the about that that, that you can't give the vaccines for a year after well, well she's, I think not. I think it says here she's planning to stop it in the last trimester anyway, yes, which anyway, is what we yeah. normally do. And how quickly so can if you, you do stop it, then then your baby can have vaccines after three Even months. Even if you restart, because she's saying how away. how can you restart? You, so how quickly can you restart? You can restart straight away. Oh, okay. So you can restart straight away, but um, but yeah, you do have to difference? think about things like um, if you're breastfeeding. It's a bit of a minefield, but it's right, yeah, really yeah. on an individual basis but if you're breastfeeding um then you know again the baby it's not advised they have live vaccination yeah but you know normally within six months 
it, it's fine. It's all it, gone through it, anyway. It's just a matter yeah. of just... And again, some people don't need to restart it. They're well. They don't yeah. need to go back on it. So it, it's... Yeah, it's different look on things. Horses for courses. Danny said hello to... Um, whoops, I seem to have lost the screen. Danny says hello to Karen there somewhere. Hello, Karen Kestel. We were talking about just now about um, the oh, Kenzie we and evening. So hi, Karen, if you, if if you there. are there, because I can't see that one myself. So Look at me squinting. <laughs> With your glasses on. <laughs> Amanda would be like, I'm, I'm like this in the MGT. I'm like that. And she's like, Kathy, use your glasses. <laughs> Uh, uh, right, so we haven't question. got much more time. Um, okay. what time. I don't know what the time is, actually. Uh, um, um, oh, yeah, we've run out of time, really. But we did have, we were going to just, men just talk briefly on mental health and running. We were talking to, again, that was um, Andrew the other day at the coffee morning, and he was talking about how um, running had helped him with the mental side of, of dealing oh, yeah. with stuff as well. Definitely. And you're a runner, aren't you? I'm not, I'm a walker, I can't do running. But... Yeah, Fair he was saying it was. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> I've seen no, you running in the rain. The day, yes, I've seen that. You've seen the picture. Yes. Um, yeah, no, so, absolutely. Yeah. The exercises. I mean, it's just proven all round to help mm. their mental health. Yeah, mental health is a huge part of IBD that we don't have much support with on yeah. a hospital basis. We have just in brief. Unfortunately, we have had a psychologist with us for six to eight months, who's been working with us part time and has been a great support for people with significant disease like in, if, in intestinal failure so people yeah. have had you know really difficult burden of disease primarily through Crohn's um, but unfortunately like everything they're not she's now leaving they're not replacing oh. her so we're pushing really hard to get that back up and running it's not something we can help with is it we, we can't we're not allowed to pay wages no. we're, allowed, we're allowed to train people but that doesn't necessarily help no I don't it? I mean it's I I'll, I'll find out a bit more um, as to where we are with the... Apparently, it is going to happen that we're going to get someone else. But right. it's just the hours, you, you know, we only get given, like, I don't know, yeah. eight hours a week or something. Yeah, which and is nothing, is And the need is, is the demand is massive. Yeah. For, yeah. You know, people, it's, a, it's a difficult illness to live with, isn't it? Well, certainly, I mean, if they need, like, training in IBD, for example, like Amanda's do, has yeah. Amanda's done hers now. Yeah, she's doing she's it now. She's doing it yeah, now, yeah, isn't she? Doing yeah, it. she's doing it. Yeah. I knew she was doing it. I didn't know if she'd finished yet. But yeah, so, I mean, that's something that we um, paid. Yes, we paid for Amanda's yeah, training. Yeah. We've paid, I think we paid for Nikki's training in the past. But that's out of the funds that you guys, you know, fund when yeah. you're fundraising. I mean, that's yeah. great. We use those funds to do things like yeah. that and buy things for the hospital and stuff like that. I mean, but the IBD standards clearly that. state that you need every big centre, and we are a big centre, yeah. every big centre should have a psychologist part-time. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just mad. But part-time eight hours is not really part-time. No, part-time is not part -time really. Part-time's no. got to be at least 16, yeah, hasn't yeah, it? At least, I mean. Absolutely. And I mean, you know, people are committed to a, you know, a, um, a group of sessions, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. So people are given 10 sessions or whatever to explore stuff. Yeah. But... No, absolutely. Getting back to running. I mean, you know, it's any exercise you can do, isn't it, really? A lot of people, if yeah. they're unwell, if they're poorly, they can't do exercise. No, yeah, or they can't do fine. some exercise. But, mm. you know, yeah, any, every little helps. Even yeah. getting out and just going for a walk. Yeah, exactly. Pace yourself. Yes. <laughs> I recommend walking. I like walking. <laughs> you do massive walks, though. I do, but I'm not at the moment because I've got me dodgy knee. But it's not to do <gasps> with IBD. <laughs> Is it wear and tear? Did you it's have it in the 80s? Wear and tear of old age. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope that's helped um, yes. answer a few questions. And I think we've gone over our 30 minutes. Look, 33, 20, Donna. Well, that's pretty good. Hi, oh, Donna. Dealing with M what? MH and I don't know what that is. Dear um, Lima. I don't know what you've typed there, Donna. More help dealing with M mental health and something. Would be great. Yeah, no, absolutely. Oh, well, maybe dealing long-term disease, would it be? De yeah, it sorry, necessary? sorry, we're not, we've not quite... Yeah, no, totally. I mean, it's a huge thing, and, you know, young people that are diagnosed, it's a massive thing to take on board. They're just starting out in life often. Yeah. They're doing their A-levels, they're at university, they've just got new jobs. You know, and it, it, they're... Um, it's, oh, that's... A lot of support. Mental needed. health. Yeah, the no, mental yeah, health. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I thought it was a person. We, we got it, Donna. I thought it was a person. I thought it was MH. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, so Donna and Megs. Donna says hello from Donna and Megs. Ah, hello both. Sorry, Hope Miss Megs is okay. <laughs> oh. oh, and Katie. Oh, hi, hi, Katie. Hi, Kate. 
Katie's husband won all those raffle tickets at your do. Oh, yes. <laughs> but then you said he bought about 40. He, did, he bought tons. <laughs> Absolutely. That was now, that was Donna's do. That was Donna's cake and a cup. Donna's, sorry, Donna's at Scarlet's. Donna's yeah. at Scarlet's yeah. Kitchen, which was absolutely wonderful. I went. Yeah, you went. You did. Oh, I saw that's that there. Yes, I because you ticket. said, mm. when are we doing our next Facebook Live? Which is how come we've got this one. forgotten all about it. Because we'd already decided we weren't going to bother with anyone this year. And then she said, I need my audience. I don't you know what she's I like. You know what she's like. <laughs> anyway, we're waffling on. We are. Yes. Lovely to uh, um, hear from you all tonight. Yes, it was. Yes. Everybody I'm look sorry, after We only do half an hour. Otherwise, get, people get bored. But um, thank you for joining us, those yeah. of you that joined us. You all us. look after yourselves. Take and care. You can see it on YouTube in a few days. We'll have it on YouTube yeah. with subtitles. Bye. Anyway, bye.